As you may know, I recently switched from Drip to Fluent CRM. And when you switch email platforms, one of the things you definitely need to be careful of is that you're emailing a nice, clean, maintained email list, and you need to look into how to break in your new server so that you don't get off onto a bad start sending from a new server and giving the email uh, service providers a reason to think that you're a spammer. And so what I want to do here briefly is I want to talk about how to keep a clean list and how to break in a new server if you uh, switch email platforms. All right, so when I switched to Fluent CRM, one of the issues that I had was that I was kind of cleaning up a bit of a mess. Now, not everybody was in Drip in a nice, clean way. Uh, Drip has inactive subscribers. I also had some WordPress user profiles that may or may not have been inside of Drip, things like that. And so when you combine all those things and then you import leads into a new system, whether it's Fluent CRM or some other one that you might be switching to, you need to think about, is the list clean? Um, have all the spam accounts been taken out of it? Have the invalid email addresses been removed from it? This way, when you start sending from the new platform, you're not getting off to a bad start by sending out to addresses that are not actually valid. So let me show you what I actually used in order to clean out the invalid emails from my list before I actually imported them into Fluent CRM. So the service that I use is called Zero Bounce, and that's at zerobounce.net. Um, and it's pretty easy to use. You can see that basically this is an email validation service. And so you can upload a list of leads to this service, um, and it will test to make sure that they're valid or invalid, whether it's a catch-all account that, you know, some people, they have this, uh, you know, spare email address account, and that's what they use to subscribe to lists in order to make sure they don't get spammed. But, you know, you as a sender, you should probably not be sending to those types of accounts because uh, you're, you're not going to be in great company there. Uh, you get other ones that report uh, spam abuse or do not mail and stuff like that. And basically, you want to remove these things from your list so that you're not sending to invalid catch all or do not mail or you know those types of accounts and that's what this service does is it will actually check and score these things so that you can remove the invalid ones from your list um, they do have pay as you go which is what i was using or if you know that you're going to be doing this a lot you can switch over to monthly but um, you know I, I used to pay as you go i just bought a bunch of credits and basically i can use these credits as i want um, and, and do it that way and it's it's pretty affordable and i think it's it's a definitely a worthy investment. It's a small investment, but a worthy investment into keeping your uh, reputation as an email sender good. Because as we know, our reputation as an email sender and our email list in general is pretty much one of our most important assets. So we don't want to screw around with it. Now, if we go into my account here, um, this is what the back end looks like. You can see that it's um, Zero Bunts does have integrations with a lot of other platforms like MailChimp and Constant Contact and here's Drip of course and I didn't even know that was theirs so that's really neat um, a Weber and a bunch of other ones unfortunately Fluent CRM is not on the list right now uh, if we go to the list of all integrations we can see that it does you know you can see Facebook Gmail uh, and I have not tested any of these integrations because I just did this using the upload process I actually went into the back end and I uploaded a file and it does that whole thing. You upload it as a CSV or a text file or what have you. Um, and then you hit the button and it will do its job. Now, when you go to download your results, you can see that here's one of the ones that I did. This uh, particular file had just a little over 2,000 leads in it. Um, and it ran its thing. Now, I'm going out of memory here, but I think the whole process probably did take, you know, a half hour or so while this thing did its job and tested out all the leads in there. But you can see that in the results, Result here, um, it said about 80% of the leads in this particular CSV are valid. Okay, these are good email addresses. Now, other ones, th these were invalid. I had 266 invalid ones. I had some that were came back as a catch-all account. Some were a spam trap. Some reported abuse. So these are basically all leads that I can go in and either not import them into Fluent CRM to begin with, or if they were already in Fluent CRM, I could go ahead and unsubscribe them so that I'm not going to email them from the new system. Now, when you download these uh, this stuff, you're going to be able to 
I think if I recall, it actually sends you a zip file uh, with a bunch of different CSVs in it. So you're going to get different CSV files for, say, all your invalid ones, all your catch-all ones, things like that. Um, and, uh, and then so you can act accordingly. Now, also, Zero Bounce does have this cool ability to fill in some data gaps with your email leads. Uh, if, and, you know, you can apply credits toward this where, for example, you can add their gender on there if you wanted to enrich your database with more information. I guess if it knows the first name and last name, you can enrich the information with that. Um, and then you can bring that information into your new email system if you would like. Um, I don't think I actually used any of that stuff, but, uh, but it is there. So that's what uh, Zero Bounce does in a nutshell. All right, so that's the one that I use called Zero Bounce. Now, if you go and you type email validation service or something like that into Google, you're sure to find other ones. You can go out there and shop around if that's something that you want to do. But it is a useful service. Um, and as you can see, some of them actually have direct integrations. Um, I'm actually going to approach the team at Fluent CRM to see about getting them onto this list because that would really be a cool uh, addition to the product to be able to verify email addresses through a remote service on the way into the list so you can act accordingly. Accordingly, I think it might actually be really good for maintaining one's sender reputation. So with that being said, let's go and talk just a little bit about that. Let's say you've got a situation now where you've done your best to clean out your list and make sure that you've got a nice clean list, but you're going to be starting to send from a brand new server. In this case, in my case, when I switched to Fluent CRM, I integrated it with Amazon SES. Now, Amazon SES is obviously a very well-known service out there for sending those emails. However, I am new to Amazon SES, and so I'm going to begin sending emails from this system um, that is, um, there's not a lot of reputation for me on it yet, okay? So how do you break in a new server, okay? Just a few little pieces of advice here that you can keep in mind. First of all, obviously, clean that list before you start sending out any emails from that new server, okay? The other thing that you should definitely start to do is instead of just blasting the whole list right off the bat as your first email, send us some smaller batches first and preferably your most engaged email segment. So let's say email your customers and whatever you want to say is up to you. Just email your customers first because they're more likely to be more engaged. Uh, or take the, uh, the, the, the leads that your current email system says were the most engaged and add a tag to those people or something in the new system so that you email just them. In other words, take your most engaged segments, not the entire list, and send out a few emails to some segments. Start off with some smaller batches. And what you're doing by doing this is that you're starting to train the, the email service providers out there, as well as Amazon, that you are gonna be sending out to clean lists and people that are actually engaged with your domain and your server IP address, okay? Now, on top of that, try to get these leads to actually engage with you. Try to get them to click on links and even better, see if you can get them to actually hit that reply button, okay? And, and send an email back to you. That's a really important and probably one of the strongest engagement signals that they can send. And so how can you get people to hit the reply button on a list the email that you sent to them? Well, ask them a question and say, hey, can you answer this, this question real quick for me? And then say, tell them that the way to answer that is to hit the reply button and just send it to you. Um, you could do a quick little informal survey, but instead of sending them to a survey system, just hit get them to hit the reply button and answer you that way. So this way you get a bunch of people that are sending emails back. Who do people usually send emails to? People they trust. They're friends, okay? And so you're sending the best engagement signal you can by getting them to reply back. And these email service providers are going to notice that and it's going to all start to stack up a good um, reputation with you on your new sending platform. So once you've done that a few times, then you can try to send out, if you have like a newsletter or something and you're sending out to a big segment or possibly even the entire list, then you can go and start doing that. Um, and, but again, the first couple times, try to get people to hit reply back and, and get those engagement metrics going. But it's sort of a ramp up process rather than just importing a bunch of leads and then sending out to everybody right off the bat. That could actually hurt your reputation right out the gate. And you don't wanna do that. You wanna kind of ramp this thing up and send those signals that you're doing things legit, okay? So that's the basics of how to ramp up a new email server. 
All right, so that's it for this video. I don't want to load too much on you for today. Uh, keep in mind that everything that I just told you is something that you should probably be doing onward. I mean, we have to keep good email list hygiene. So the idea of using an email validation service and removing invalid accounts and those types of things are the types of things you should really be doing all the time. Um, it's also important to be looking at having an ongoing email re-engagement system set up where, you know, if somebody goes 60 to 90 days and they never open anything and they don't click on anything, your system should react to that so that it does not just keep sending them the same stuff like endlessly, but maybe you, you you add a tag to their profile saying that they're unengaged or something like that. And then your system will stop and it will send them a re-engagement campaign to try to get them to, to show signs of life, okay? And then, of course, if they don't respond to that, maybe you need to just remove them from the list or unsubscribe them or tag them in some way so that you exempt them from your mass emails. But uh, you, you need to think list hygiene is something that is an ongoing effort to keep your sending scores up. It's not just relevant to when you're breaking in a new server. Uh, you need to keep this stuff in mind and be a responsible email marketer. Okay, so that's it for today. If you have any questions, go below, post that comment. I'll get back to you and I will talk to you later.